Hello everybody, this is a live severe weather briefing with a tornado threat starting to increase across southern and southeastern Georgia. This is the last severe weather event that I'll be watching from the sidelines. I'll be going out into the field for the next several months chasing every single setup starting in the middle of March. But today we do have another tornado threat that is starting to develop across a narrow, narrow zone in uh, uh, southern Georgia. And here there are some uh, supercells that are beginning to develop. I'm using the Radar Omega app right now uh, to view this severe weather. And here you can see a supercell with a severe thunderstorm warning that has now been issued. That is where the yellow uh, line is located. Uh, this is uh, in southern Georgia here. You can see just to the north uh, of the Florida uh, border. And this is beginning to develop supercellular characteristics. This storm right here, is certainly one I would watch for. I think you can see the warm front that is uh, that, that appears on radar here. Uh, this is where uh, the low-level wind shear is enhanced. I was just looking at the latest wrap analysis, and that low-level helicity is about two to three hundred, which is more than sufficient for a tornado threat. You can even see a hook-like appendage right there on the backside of that storm. So this is definitely one uh, that I'm watching closely. Uh, it's moving off to the east. There you can see uh, that hook-like appendage on the southwest side. Let's pull up the velocity of this storm. And there's the velocity that uh, shows a little bit of a rotation. Uh, this is uh, before the severe thunderstorm warning was issued. There you can see the inflow zone of that storm. You can see a little wraparound as well on the backside. This storm is moving off to the east-northeast. And this is this warm frontal zone. Everything off to the north of this location is definitely in uh, that stable air. But this is a storm that we're going to be watching closely for a tornado threat. Here you can see the latest wrap analysis. And uh, this shows the warm front that uh, we, are, we are analyzing on radar. Here you can see the warm front very clearly in the latest wrap analysis. Everything to the south, there's plenty of surface base instability. Not a lot of surface, uh, a low level convergence though until you get along this warm front which is located across southern Georgia. To the north of the warm front you have those east northeasterly winds that are at about five knots. To the south of that warm front you have southwesterly winds well mixed, a lot of instability down there. And then right along this warm front, that's where that low level wind shear is maximized. And there is a surface low as well that's propagating right along this warm front. So just ahead of that surface low, that's where the wind shear is maximized. And I do expect there to be a tornado watch to be issued across this zone if one isn't in effect already. It is just a slight risk and that's because these storms are going to really start to ramp up, but they're gonna run out of land. They're gonna move over the Atlantic uh, here uh, once they mature. So there is a limited window of about the next two, three, four hours where there could be a tornado threat across southern Georgia. Here you can see uh, the latest wrap analyzed low level wind shear. This is the effective storm relative felicity. And this is two to 300, basically in, a, in the lowest kilometer here across far southern Georgia and northern Florida. Time will tell to see if this severe warm storm can anchor on this warm front turn right and move into this uh, strong, strongly sheared environment. And uh, there definitely is plenty of wind shear. I'm going to show you a hodograph here in a second, looking at the low-level jet. It's out of the southwest at about 40 knots. And this storm system and the environment preceding it has definitely been a known tornado producer, even though the last few days there's been a lull in the tornadic activity well in advance of this system uh, due to some jet streak activity within the zonal flow out ahead of the cutoff system across northern Baja. Uh, there was even a tornado, obviously a devastating tornado in the Nashville area through Cookville. Uh, very, very uh, damaging tornado there. Uh, then the next two days, the coastal front settled right near the northern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the low-level jet uh, was, was definitely strong, but there was a lot of rain-cooled air to the north of that boundary, and that uh, mitigated the tornado threat over Tuesday and Wednesday. But today, that instability has lifted back north across the northern Florida Peninsula into southern Georgia. There's a southwesterly low-level jet there at 40 knots, and that's uh, making some pretty strong wind shear as well. I can show you that uh, warm front as well on the uh, surface map. This is the latest surface map. You can see dew points in the low 70s to the south of it, 72, 73 there, temperature 79. That's very warm spring air down there across northern Florida into southern Georgia. You do have quite a bit of rain cooled air here anchored in across 
uh, southern Georgia. And this is also a pretty strongly sheared environment, but with all this rain cooled air, that's going to uh, basically reduce the tornado threat to zero north of that warm front. So there is a very narrow corridor right here across far southern Georgia, northern Florida, maybe even including the Valdosta area, definitely off to the east until these storms move off the coast where I think that there is going to be a tornado threat. Let's go back to radar real quick. Then we're going to pull up a satellite. Here's the ra latest radar. This is the uh, updated velocity imagery. And you can see that it's just a severe thunderstorm warning so far. Let's uh, see if we can increase and in tilt just a bit. And this severe thunderstorm warning includes the Valdosta, Georgia area. Right now, I'm not seeing a whole lot uh, of rotation uh, in the upper levels of this storm. This is just a severe thunderstorm warning uh, so far, but this is going to be moving off to the east here. And the, uh, the, the mesocyclone cyclonic portion of the storm is going to pass just to the south of Valdosta. But here you can see a pretty tight gradient on the southeastern side of that reflectivity. This is that uh, tight of a reflectivity gradient that we always talk about. You can see the appendage wrapping around the back side of the storm. Upper level winds taking all the hydrometeors out of that updraft up to the northeast. Make sure this stream is working okay. There we go. Going back to the Radar Omega app. And uh, the, so the mesocyclonic portion of the storm is going to pass just to the south of Valdosta. Here you can see the radar site. So this is very close to the radar. But looking at the uh, super res velocity, it's just now tightening up. But when I'm looking at this configuration on radar, it certainly does have a classic supercellular configuration. Uh, there's also storms trying to develop uh, to the west of Monticello, Florida, just to the south of the Georgia border. Here's the Georgia border. As you can see, there's also some storms developing to the east along the warm front. But I believe that this feature right here is that sharp warm front that is in extreme southern Georgia. You can really see the convergence along that boundary. So if this storm lifts to the north of that warm front and into the stable air, the tornado threat is going to reduce to zero with it as well. And looking off to the northeast, you can see a couple other storms that are trying to get going, but these are elevated above the shallow stable air. And let's pull up that uh, CAPE analysis once again here. And you can see how sharp that warm front is in that line across far southern Georgia. So that certainly does line up with what we're seeing on radar. It does look like there is a little bit of a surge of surface space instability to the north though, right along the coast. So I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of storms go severe and tornadic as they approach the Atlantic. But there is a very narrow window there for that tornado potential. Let's go back. To the radar radar omega here pulling up the base velocity once again just a little bit of convergence near the hook area but this is scanning very low in the storm it's very close to that radar site as well here in southern georgia here you can see the severe thunderstorm warning uh, that is in effect across uh, uh, southern Georgia as well. There's that warning. It goes in effect until 5.30 local time. That wouldn't be correct. It's Greenwich Mean Time there. Even then, uh, this uh, se severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for the next 38 minutes. So in Eastern Time, right now it is 2.52 Eastern Time. So this would be in effect until 3.30 Southern Georgia, Central Loundis County in South Central Georgia until 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time at 2.41. A severe thunderstorm warning was located over I-75 at exit 16. So that was about 12 minutes ago near Valdosta, but that's the core of that storm and is moving northeast at 55 miles an hour. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this storm and look at that hail less than 0.75. That's not surprising given this environment. We'll look at the soundings here in a second. But now I'm going to pull up the photograph that these storms are moving into. And this is the forecast photograph by the HRRR. But it is quite representative 
of that environment. And this is why I'm so concerned because if any storms can get going and turn right into this environment, you can see that the one kilometer wind is near 50 knots out of the southwest. Here's the fast storm motion. This has it over 50, well, it's at 55 knots uh, east northeast. Critical angle here is about 45 degrees, but when you have such a long shear vector, your surface wind out of the south at about 15 knots. And this photograph is looking down on the shear profile of the atmosphere. So it's a great way to plot the wind shear. Um, basically, if you have a big curved photograph like this, that means you're going to have more low level shear. Uh, and the, the, the area here between that hodograph curve and your storm motion vector, that's proportional to the storm relative helicity, and there is quite a bit of it. And even though you do have this veer back veer profile aloft, you have such a long shear vector, that's about 40 knots there, that it compensates for a relatively shallow critical angle and this veer back veer profile that sometimes is perceived as being a negative. I don't think it's that much if some of these other factors can overcompensate for some of these limitations. And if you have the winds at the mid and high levels of the atmosphere being strong enough to evacuate those hydrometeors from the updraft, that can increase the tornado potential as well. But that's a pretty textbook photograph for tornado potential. If a storm can anchor on that boundary, that's really, uh, that will really determine whether or not a tornado potential materializes. Let's head back to the reflectivity image here. Still, the severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for Valdosta. Here you can see the hook-like appendage on the south side of that storm. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect just to the southwest of the radar site, but that does include the Valdosta area. So this is a storm to watch, but I think it's just about to lift north of this warm front. There you can see the warm front that's in place across southern Georgia. But the wind shear along this area is pretty strong, so I'm going to be watching these storms further to the southwest, just on the Florida side of the Georgia border. These could materialize into supercells that could mature before they reach the warm front, and those would be ones that would have more of a tornado threat here across far northern Florida, southeastern Georgia later on. But it's this zone that we really need to watch, the warm frontal zone, as these storms mature off to the west. So thank you for joining me for this live update. I'm going to keep these coming this afternoon as this tornado threat continues. Here is the target area across southeastern Georgia into northern Florida. Looking at the long range, it does look like it could get active again around March 17th and 18th. That's what I'm watching again. I'm going to be cleaning up this mustache just a little bit before I get into chase mode. And then we're heading out there middle of March with our rockets, sensors, Dominator 3, closer to peak season in April. But let's hope that there's not more damaging tornadoes this afternoon and evening across southeastern Georgia. I think that it's possible that stable air to the north of the warm front could be the saving grace for today. But if any supercell can anchor on that warm front, or even just to the south of it, I do think that there is a pretty substantial tornado threat. So stay safe, everybody. Stay tuned to those warnings. Keep those weather radios powered up and certainly have a safety plan in place because we're just beginning severe weather season, especially here across the deep south.